It's not going to fit me. <laughs> okay, first of all, before I get into the video, do you see anything different? I am filming with a different frame rate, so let me know if you like this better than the way I originally or that I normally film. Is, is this too jarring? Is it too realistic or is it just right? Okay, so here we go. I got an email from a viewer and she happened to have a very special book. Uh, it's a book that came out in 2006, so I will not feature this book on this channel nor the pattern that's in it. But what is in this book, it's called, um, just a moment. Okay, so what this book is called is Lion Brand Yarn Vintage Styles for Today. Well, it is a compilation of vintage patterns ranging from this exact book right here that we worked in before. And from what I can see, on up even into the 60s. So it's either some of their most popular patterns, which is kind of funny because there's another, there's two other patterns in this more modern book that I desperately tried to make for you guys, but could not figure out how, so I abandoned those projects. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming it's either their most, po some of their most popular patterns from yesterday or some of their most popular yet difficult to figure out patterns from yesterday. Uh, for my own ego, I'm going to go with the latter. <laughs> so I'm not going to use this pattern to remake our naughty hat. I'm still going to work out of the original pattern. What this book did when she, she didn't send me the book. She sent me screenshots of the updated pattern, not updated, what they did is they took the original pattern and rewrote it into modern terms. Um, so I'm not going to use that pattern. I'm still going to work off of this one, but I am inspired. And if I do get stuck, I am allowing myself to reference the modern verbiage book. Again, I won't be showing it on camera because it's not vintage. It's from 2006. It is fully copyright protected, and that's not going to be on this channel. I will say if you want to pick up the book, I did buy the book. I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. I just bought it last night. There is one, they have them available. One, I think I saw, but they might have more available on Amazon, and it was like $14. And then Lion Brand themselves are selling the book still to this day on their website. Um, after shipping, it came out to about the exact same price as Amazon. So it was like $15 and some change through Lion Brand. I did go ahead and buy it through Lion Brand because the reviews, some people didn't even get their books. Some people thought they were buying a new book and it was all scribbled over and, and had notes and they were used. So I opted not for the Amazon, just being completely open with you on that. Uh, buyer beware on Amazon, but you can go to lionbrand.com and actually find the book. Just, just go to Google and type in Lion Brand Yarn Vintage Styles for Today. All right, let's get into this. That's enough of that. Let's get into this. So what I was able to figure out from the modern book is what material and hook do I need? Now, the material that they recommended is discontinued, but it did say that it was a number six super bulky weight and that we need to use a nine millimeter hook. Well, look what I have from Lion Brand, Woolies Thick and Quick, nine millimeter hook, super bulky, and it looks almost just like the original yarn used. Okay, with this one here, I'm not. <laughs> I actually want to wear this hat. I do. And I have absolutely zero intentions of wearing a hat with giant crochet yarn feathers coming off of it. I do have some real feathers I will put on there just for the sake of the video. I will not wear them out in public, though. As far as the black band goes, uh, in the modern version of this, the black band... It looked like it went all around and then came up at a point in front of the the quills. Um, I'm just going to make it my own way. I'm going to get creative with it and make it the way I want it to be. So here we go. Let's get into it. I have my nine. Oh, you can't even see it because it is neon, but this is a nine millimeter hook. I have the original pattern and I have the right yarn. I'm so excited. 
our hat actually starts right here. Um, and we need to chain four and join a ring and make eight half double crochet in the ring. Do not join. So again, I need to get one of my stitch markers ready. Okay. Oh, I'm also going to start with a magic circle. In the modern version of the book, they also recommend starting, they recommend starting with either a chain or a magic circle. So I feel like I have permission to do a magic circle. So that's what I am going to do. All right, half double crochets, eight of them. Yarn over, here we go. That's one and two. I will go ahead and mark my first. All right, one, two, and three. I will be right back whenever I have eight. Look at the difference, I mean. <laughs> you know, looking at the, uh, the new version of this pattern, it's, they completely rewrote the pattern actually. Remember whenever I said that they, it's the same pattern just in modern terms? No, it's a complete rewrite, totally different stitches and everything. So yeah, let's see how this turns out with this, mod with this more modern yarn, but what I think is the correct size yarn, but the genuine 1912 pattern. Yeah, I was looking at the pattern. It's a completely different rewrite. All right, here are eight half double crochets the rewrite calls for single crochets there you go i mean it's they don't even call for eight they call for six so it's a completely completely different pattern okay eight half double crochet in the ring do not join first round draw up a loop in the first stitch one in the second stitch yarn over through three loops on the hook chain one now here is the start of our repeat so let's do the very first stitch and then we will get into the repeat. I do remember how we worked this pattern, but for the sake of getting it right, I'm just going to read straight off the book, off the, this book, <laughs> not the, not the new one. Okay. So draw up a loop in the first stitch and let me, Go ahead and tighten this up. Bring everything together. Draw up a loop in the first stitch, right? And one in the second stitch. There we go. And it says yarn over through three loops on the hook. Mark this first stitch. Okay. Then we chain one and draw up a loop in the same place as the last. Draw up a loop in the next stitch over. Draw through all three and chain one. And I learned I'm gonna chain, I'm gonna chain those pretty loose. Not super loose, but loose enough to work in. Okay, now we're down here. Uh, here's the start of our repeat. Here's the end of our repeat. So we're just gonna continue to do this all around. There we go. Loose, same stitch, next stitch, pull through three, loose enough, chain one, same, next, loose, chain, next, loose. This is literally my mental cadence. I'm just speaking it out loud. <laughs> Same, next, loose. And you, you need to be tightened up again. Okay, so this right here is the end of round one. The eight half double crochets don't count. So this is the end of round one, the first round where we worked our special cluster stitch. I think what I was supposed to do is actually come down here and go back into the same stitch and then start to eliminate that gap. So that's why I wanted to come back and do this again. But I'm going to have some great ASMR for you because the sound of this wool is so relaxing for me. It's just a nice sound. Okay, so I'm going to go back into the same stitch and then into my first stitch of the round. 
and complete the cluster stitch like that. That's what I think we were supposed to do. And look, that gap is gone. Okay, I'm going to work round two now, which is the same as the first round, but I won't speak so you can hear this wonderful wool rustling around. Okay, let's work on round three now. So round three, same as the first round, then draw up a loop in each of the next two stitches, yarn over through three, chain one. Draw up a loop in the same stitch, that's where I messed up in the first video, in the same stitch, one into the next, yarn over, and uh, yarn over through three, chain one, repeat, from here. So this is the round where we're going to work the cluster stitch, uh, every other stitch in the same stitch, you know, and then every other stitch, we just work the two. So our first stitch will be a in the same stitch, uh, meaning this is the last stitch of round two. So I'm going to go back into the same stitch. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't worked. I didn't finish round two. Forgive me. There we go. Okay, now round two is finished. Okay, so I'm going to go into the same stitch. Oh, wait, no, it said like the first round, right? So I'm supposed to go right into the first two stitches. Yes. Yes. Right into the first two stitches. Loose chain one. Okay. Now the next stitch we work into the same stitch and into the next stitch. Now the next cluster stitch, we work into each of the next two stitches. Now the next one, we go into the same stitch and into the next stitch. Loose chain one, then we go into each of the next two Okay, now we go into the same and into the next. Chain one into each of the next two. One, two, into the same, into the next. Each of the next two. Into the same, into the next. There we go. Now, I don't, okay, yeah, that was an end to the same. Okay, my bad. Same, next, loose, next, next, loose, same, oop. Same, next, chain one, 
next, next, chain one, same, next, chain, next, next, same, next, here we go. And then our last two stitches are the next and next stitch. Here we go, chain one. Okay, so far so good. And then uh, we have the fourth and fifth rounds are just like the third round, okay? So we start off, we ended with next, next. So let's start with same, next, just to keep it, keep the continuity, the consistency. Since we are working in a continuous round, it's fine. Okay, and then we go next, next. There we go. So this is going to be round four. I'm on round four. I'm going to do this again for round five, and then I will be right back. Okay, that is round five done. Let's look at our measurements now. I mean, major difference from the first time I made this. We're at essentially eight and a half in inches in diameter. Okay, sixth round, draw up a loop in the first stitch, one in the second. Yarn over through three, chain one, repeat. So make five rounds more like the sixth. Fasten with a slip stitch and turn. Okay, so I think now what we are working on are the, is the walls of the hat down here. So it still seems like maybe her hat might actually be wider than mine. I still kind of get that impression, but here we go. We're going to follow the pattern. All right. And I need to go back on that first page. Okay. So round six. Uh, draw up a loop in the next stitch. And one in the next one over. Okay. Pull through three. Does it say to chain one? Let's see here, yeah. yes. Then we chain one and repeat. So now we're not going to be working into the same stitch at all. We're just gonna be working one into the next and one into the next. Pull through, chain one, then we go into the next and the next pull through, chain one, into the next. So like this, for a total of, I'm going to say for a total of seven rounds, because it's telling us six round, and that, no, for a total of six rounds. Uh, so six round we're working now, then five more rounds like the six. So a total of six rounds. So that's going to take us to the end of round 11. Okay, so I am on round 6 now. I will be back whenever I get to round 11. But these are very simple. Just pull up a, draw up a loop in each of the next two stitches. Basically, we're working two single crochet together every, every, st every two stitches. Okay, so I will be right back when I reach round 11. Okay, so I worked two rounds and then I undid them <laughs> because I have an idea. I was looking at the hat and you see how it has a quite of a, cr a crisp bend right here. We're not going to get that crisp bend if we work through both loops. So I think for the first round, I'm going to work through back loop only to create a bend, and then I will work through both loops the rest of the way down the sides of the hat. So um, 
I am still on round seven then, technically. So here we go. Uh, let's see here. That was... Oh, whenever I ended my chains, I ended one, one too many. Okay, so working my last stitch here, last normal stitch. Now I'm gonna work back loop only. So back loop and back loop. Chain one, mark that. There will be, as far as the back loops go, it's going to kind of swoop up like this, but that'll be fine. I want to create that bend, you know? So the stitch hasn't changed, just the placement of it has. There we go. And now you can see it's going to be able to bend and I'm going to have, see how it's bending now? And I'm gonna be able to achieve that. I wasn't achieving it at first. It was like, it was doming, like a dome, like just a big, huge beanie. It wasn't doing this. So that is one change I am making that is completely unrelated to the original 1912 pattern. And I don't have a clue if they even say to do this in the modern pattern. Um, I guess I can comb through it real quick and see if they do. Now there is no mention of back loop only, uh, but the top of her hat is quite flat. Um, I, at the end of this video, I will show you the modern version of this from the Lion Brand magazine. Okay, here we go. I'll be right back again. I'm going to work my way down to round 11, uh, but my first round, round 7, will be all in back loop only. All right, I'll see you then. Okay, so I, I got basically to round 10, and uh, it was looking a bit puffy on the sides. So what I did is I ended all my work again. <laughs> Just just this part of the work anyway. And um, I decided that I was going to reduce two stitches for the first two rounds. How I did that is I worked my first stitch and then um, instead of after I work my first stitch, well, I'll work my second stitch and then I won't chain one. Not chaining one before making the next stitch reduces one stitch. And so I worked myself all the way up to here and reduced another stitch, meaning I went in, pulled up a loop, next stitch over, pulled up a loop, pulled through all three, and then didn't chain one just simply, and I believe this is the one right here where I didn't chain one, you can see a little dip. And then I just simply started um, <clears throat> continuing to work uh, with chaining one as usual. So only two stitches, and you can see the one I didn't chain one right here. You see the little dip? So two stitches on the round one, I did not chain one to decrease two stitches. And then round two of the wall of the walled area, um, I did the same thing. Uh, this is, it says round nine, that is not accurate. Wait, yeah, it is seven, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah, nine. Um, so this one here, I just decreased two stitches again. I'm not going to decrease anymore because I feel like it's looking better now. Before, it was looking quite domed out a bit. Now, it's looking a little more cleaned up, like it's supposed to. Okay, so that was just another little tip for me that is um, outside of the original pattern. So basically, what you would do, let's pretend like this is a reduced stitch I want to make. Normally, you would chain one. Now, that would make two stitches, one stitch here, and your chain one being a stitch. But to reduce, decrease the stitch... Just don't chain one and then immediately jump over and start working your pattern. You, it really won't make it a, a noticeable impact, but it will cinch the hat in just a little bit around the edges, which is what I really needed. Because it was looking a little bit poofy. And it needs to look like this. See? 
uh, but it wasn't. It was the opposite way. It was billowing out. So that was my solution for that. So there we go. Yep. And then if you want to decrease, you'll do this. And don't chain. Just move over. And that gives you one fully decreased stitch. No chain in between these two stitches. Okay. All right. There we go. Another little extra tip for you. I'm just sort of working these out as I go. Almost ready to come back to you. I wanted to point out the reason you should decrease two stitches at a time if you wanted to do it for one or two rounds is because you have to work into two stitches to create one stitch. So you don't want to eliminate just one stitch or three stitches because that's going to leave you with only one stitch left to work at the end that's unworked. So you want to keep your stitch count even. So if you do want to reduce, make sure that you reduce two stitches per round that you're looking to reduce. Okay, round 11 is done. So now we're going to work on, I think, the brim of the hat. I think that's what's next. So here we go, uh, round 12. Um, oh, at the end of round 11, we need to fasten with a slip stitch and turn. So I have not done that yet. I did chain one. Um, on this cluster stitch, so I'm going to keep that chain one there, and I'm going to go ahead and fasten with a slip stitch and turn. Okay, now it wants us to work one round of single crochet. Uh, here we go. Make one round of single crochet, do not join, turn, and make two more rounds. Now, you see, this is where the hat splits off into a V. I'm going to go ahead and look at the modern pattern real quick and see if they recommend doing this as well. Part of me thinks this isn't really the way it's supposed to be, but maybe I'm wrong. I'll be right back. I, again, I can't show that pattern um, here on this channel, but I'll tell you what it says. In the modern pattern, it does not say to do that. It First of all, the modern pattern wants us to work... 14 rows of the cluster repeat, um, 14 rounds. And then on the 15th round, it wants you to turn and work some slip stitches, work slip stitches all around, turn and work two more rows, not slip stitches, forgive me, single crochet. Turn for round 16 and 17 and work two rounds of single crochet at that point. Then round 18, it says to chain one and skip the slip stitch and then work a cluster plus chain one 24 times, remove the last loop from the hook, and then in parentheses it says that this is to be used in the brim row three. Very strange. Hmm. So now the question is, do I take my cues from the modern pattern? Which, by the way, this really isn't a very tall hat. Uh, with the number of rows that we worked in the repeat. Uh, her hat's not super tall either, but it's a little taller than what we're doing. Um, okay, so... We did the whole not joining at the end of the round the first time we made this hat. It really didn't make a lot of sense then. So I think we might take our cues from the modern pattern and probably from maybe our instincts a little bit too and not join. And let's work three rounds of single crochet. Now, both patterns say to work, uh, let's see here, turn, work one round of single crochet. It says do not join, turn to make two more rounds. Both patterns say that to work one round of single crochet with the right side out and then turn, no, with the wrong side facing you, forgive me, with the wrong side facing you, and then turn and do two more rounds of single crochet with the right side facing you. So we'll do that, but I'm not going, I am going to join because that just, 
doesn't make a lot of sense. There's no reason for it. They don't bring it up in the old pattern. They don't, they don't say why this is needed. They don't reference the split. There's nothing about it. So it doesn't really seem right. So I'm going to, do I want to chain one? No, I'm not going to chain one. I'm just going to turn and Hmm, I don't want this to look like a ledge. I'm gonna slip stitch one more stitch over just to create a smooth join. It's a little more smooth now. We won't lose any stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and join, I'm not join, but start a single crochet right here into this first slip stitch and into this second slip stitch. So you see, we aren't losing any stitch count here. And I'm going to work one single crochet into every stitch around. And then I'm going to join with a slip stitch. <laughs> I got so used to working those one cluster of stitches that I thought I was making them. And then uh, after this first round of single crochet, I will... <laughs> well, when you get used to doing something, it's hard to break the habit, isn't it? I will join, turn and work two rounds of single crochet in the same direction. And then we will go from there. Both patterns differ dramatically after this point. So here we go. I'll be right back. This is round 12. According to the pattern, this is round 15. And to say, according to the new 2006 pattern, this is round 15. Okay, all done. And I was thinking, where they say don't join, am I being dumb? Is this a me being dumb thing again? And they mean to work in a continuous round, and that's why they say don't join. Let's see. No, because it said turn, didn't it? Let's see here. Uh, make a round of single crochet, do not join, turn. Okay, it wasn't me being dumb. They did say do not join, but turn. That will create an opening. So, all right, I was sitting here thinking, oh, were you just being dumb again? No, yay. I'm gonna have to wear a wig whenever I try this thing on because as you all know, I have no hair. And it seems like a lot of these hats they make are, t are for people with hair. I would imagine her hair must be helping to hold that hat up. I don't have any hair. I'm probably gonna have to wear a wig. Let me see, let me put this thing on my head just as is, hang on. Oh, not a prayer's chance. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to wear this as big as it is, I really don't. Hmm model in the 2006 version it's she's wearing it over her ears all the way down to her eyebrows it's like covering the outer portions of her eyebrows of course I'll show you that while hers is sitting atop her forehead like above her forehead I would say easily three inches above her eyebrows maybe about an inch below her hairline so I think the big hair is helping um yeah is going to be different. Okay. Yeah, I had to pull the camera up a bit because it's so big that uh, it was just a little too crowded. Okay. Now we are on round 15. So that was 12, 13, 14. Now we're on round 15. And um, it says here, turn, make two, skipping the first stitch. Ah. Okay. Turn. Oh, Take up a loop in the first space. Well, we dealt with that verbiage before. Uh, we don't have a space. We have stitches. Okay, take up a loop in the first space, one in the second space. Yarn over through three, chain one, repeat. Skip the first stitch on the left side of the hat. Hmm. Okay. So it does say not to join when we're done with our last single crochet round. So I did not do that. I did not join. But I'm going to take up the first stitch and the second stitch, basically make a cluster stitch, chain one, and place my stitch marker. 
Okay, take up a loop in the first, the second, yarn over, okay, pull through three, chain one, repeat. Um, that was another issue that we had, is that we have an asterisk right here that leads to nowhere. It leads to nowhere. It just follows the word repeat, and we don't get a follow-up of that asterisk. There is, there is no follow-up. We just immediately move down to the quills. So, yeah, and I think that might be a, an error. Maybe they meant, like, repeat here, but they probably meant, you know, repeat from the very beginning. Okay, because that's what I'm going to do. Repeat. It just says repeat. No, no, the asterisk is next to next to this. Skip the first stitch on the left side of the hat. And I don't know what is the left side of the hat. I can only assume this is the back of the hat. So this is the left side of the hat. So this is the first stitch on the left side of the hat, or this is the last stitch. What is the first stitch on the left side of the hat? Well, if the hat is this way, then this is the left side of the hat, yes. What do they consider the, the first stitch? This has to be the last stitch. I don't know. I don't know, so therefore I'm not going to care anymore. <laughs> that's, how, that's how life works. If I don't know, then I don't care. <laughs> I'm trying really, really hard to make this pattern work. I'm to the point where I'm ready to go Vogue and just make it work based on looking at the photo and what I think is right. That's what I'm ready to do at this point. Because I, you know, I'm definitely not following the modern pattern as the modern one is like a top hat, the way it looks. It, it looks a lot like a, like a chunky, fat top hat that you wear down to your eyebrows. <laughs> and this one will definitely cover my eyebrows. It may very well cover half my eyes. <laughs> but I am ready to just go rogue at this point and just make this my way. Are we going to care if I did that? Are we really going to care if I did that? I'm going rogue, you guys. This is the last part of the of the actual hat before we get to the quills. It says here, fasten with a slip stitch, break yarn, make one row all around hat. And it just says make one row. It doesn't say it doesn't even say make one row of what? I didn't even show you that. How rude. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to make this my way now. So here's what I'm gonna do. I need, I need this brim to grow just a little bit and I need it to curl. So let's do this, the Karina making her own pattern at this point way. All right, we have our three rows of single crochet. This is the last stitch of our three rows of single crochet. I need this first round to grow. So we're going to do every other stitch thing, right? Where we work in the same stitch every other stitch. So let's start with not working in every other stitch stitch. <laughs> well, we need to call this something. We need to call this something. The two stitch cluster. No. Um, because we, we it's a cluster, right? But every other stitch will be working in the same stitch and in the next stitch and then in the next. You guys come up with a good name for the two different types of clusters we're working here. So the one I just worked, you work into each of the next two stitches, is that like next two cluster and same two cluster? I don't know, you guys help me come up with a good name. All right, we just worked that. Now I'm gonna go into the same stitch and into the next stitch. And there we go, chain one, next, next, chain one, same, Next, chain one, next, next, chain, same, next. Okay, I'm gonna work this all around. I'll be right back. Okay, so now you can see by making uh, this first row wider, we have a bit of a curl going on. Now I wanna make it smaller. So I'm gonna chain one, I only wanted that first row to have increases because I want it to curl up. Now I want it to 
tighten back down a little bit. So I'm going to work my first stitch here. There we go. I'm not going to chain one. Next stitch over. I'm going to decrease four stitches off this round. Okay, so next stitch over is going to be normal. Chain one. Again, I'm going to do this in quarters. So one here, one here, one here, and one here. Not, not any specific stitch count in between. Just I already did one here, one here, one here, and one here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I will be right back whenever I get to my next decrease. Okay, so I am roughly a quarter of the way, not exact, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be. So my next stitch, I'll go ahead and decrease it by not chaining one, just jumping over. And here we go. And then I'll do the same thing whenever I reach Cross this way and then that way. I'll be right back when I get back around to the beginning. Okay, I am going to work one more round of the cluster stitches. No increasing, no decreasing. Just going to keep it as is. So here we go. One more round. That should give me the length I want out of a brim. And this is what I have left so far. I think I have enough for one more round. So here we go. I will be right back. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, I have, I have some emu feathers here. Uh, when Justin was in high school, one of his teachers raised emus and peacocks. So she was given emu feathers to some of the kids. So I'm going to stick a feather in my hat. <laughs> there we go. One there. And let's do one. Make sure that's not backwards. There we go. Nope. Let's go down here. Here we go. Nope. Okay. <laughs> the feather's going. And I'm not going to waste any more yarn with this project. <clears throat> I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to unravel this and keep this yarn, this gorgeous yarn. This can definitely go to, to something more useful to me. But I do have this really pretty headscarf. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, see, now we're looking 80s. Now we're looking kind of 80s here, kind of pretty woman. Let me see if I can tighten this thing up around my head. Hey, I tightened it up around my head. Here we go. I mean, it it honestly it fits now. It definitely looks more 80s um minus the feathers. It does definitely look a bit more 80s now. And yeah, so I'll take these out and what do we think? It's not it's not right. Okay, I'm going to show you the original, not the original, the 2006 version. Now, here it is. Okay, and there it is on my computer. This was the email that was sent to me. Yeah, a bit different. Uh, let me show you the cover of this magazine. Okay, here is the cover of this magazine. This one right here, I tried making twice. That's the one she's wearing right now. That's that pattern. I tried making it twice. It's literally in my pile. I also tried making this Sontag. This was the first Sontag I was gonna make for y'all. But you can see it looks like it goes all the way up into the 60s. So this is what this magazine looks like. You can find it on lionbrand.com. So it's not the same. Theirs looks more like a top hat. Mine looks more like it was in Casting Call of Pretty Woman. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's spin this around. You can. You can probably wear the tie off to the side 
like that. Let's see? Come down a little on the eyes, have that sort of, you know, make this hat in black, put a scarf around it, do a smoky eye with a dark lip, and, and even if you don't smoke, just pretend to smoke them. Okay, so what do we think now? With a headscarf, it's honestly a nicer hat. No feathers in a headscarf, yeah, it's, it's nicer. It surely is. Uh, I, I actually don't mind it now. I was able to tie the thing on my head. I don't mind it now. Let's see if I can flatten the top out. Let's see if I can do that the way it was intended to look. There we go. Well, I'm gonna, I, there's just gonna be a dome up there, but there it is with the, the top flattened out now. And you can see by working that back loop only on that first round, we achieved precisely what we were meant to achieve. Look at the picture, see the top, boom, okay. Lion Brand should hire me to write their patterns. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so there it is. Did I redeem myself even a little bit? <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Bye.